Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We are headed into our final segment of the day talking about college basketball. It is March 1st, so we are just around the corner of some March Madness. I'm very excited. I think it's one of the best times of the sports year. And this year is shaping up to be an incredibly interesting March Madness based off of the fact that we have had these ranked teams losing at a historic rate. We've been keeping up with the record of top 10 ranked teams versus unranked teams on the road. They are hitting just about 50%. It was even lower than that for the majority of the year, but they've climbed back to around 500, which is obviously sort of comes out to be the means, the average, but I do think that it leaves a lot of questions about which one of these top teams is going to be upset early in March Madness, because I think that it's something that is sort of bound to happen. We're seeing more and more year after year some of the biggest upsets in NCAA history. I mean, if you just look at the past five years, having multiple one seeds lose to 16 seeds, as much as that had never happened before, and now we've seen it twice in at least the past decade. I'm trying to remember, Virginia was probably something along the lines of 2017, 2018, I think they won it in 2019, so it was probably 2018, but that's enough r- rattling off different years. But And then we saw it again last year with Purdue losing, and I think that it's more likely than not that we're going to go another 90 years without seeing it or however long it had been up until that first Virginia loss to U- U- UMBC. Um, and... I guess first we'll just start by laying out the top seeded teams. I think that we have three teams that are just about locks to be a number one seed. That is Houston, Purdue, and UConn. They have all been off the charts in terms of the computer numbers, in terms of the body of work, their quad one and quad two wins. They are all up at the top. Now, Purdue obviously always is going to as based off of their recent tournament experiences they are going to have doubts surrounding them and I do think that this is the best version of the Purdue team that we have seen in the past couple years Braden Smith Fletcher Lawyer and the rest of the starting lineup obviously Zach Eady but I'm just talking about specifically the supporting cast Uh, Lance Jones as well, where they are all a lot more reliable than we've seen Purdue teams in the past have, but the bench is still a huge red flag to me with the lack of production that they get. And I know that in March Madness, especially in college basketball in general, we see benches really shorten up when the tournament comes around, but I think to not have any other sort of real options going for them is something that really does worry me. Now, do I think they're going to be upset in the first round again as a one seed? Definitely not. We're still going to have to wait to see sort of what other, you know, what whether or not they are the overall one seed and what teams are going to be in bracket in their bracket and all of that. But based off of, you know, some of the projections, I think that there are a list of, you know, five or so seeded teams that would definitely be scary matchups for Purdue. If you go on ESPN right now, you look at the bracketology, the current, um, the current bracket that they have, I think all of the listed five seeds could definitely beat Purdue. That is BYU, Illinois, Clemson, and Washington State. I'm a big fan of Washington State. I think that they are a great story. I love the... I mean, I'm sad for the Pac-12 and everything, but the year that they've had in the the uh, football and now basketball, 
is sort of a nice ending of the chapter. I think that all of those teams could potentially knock off Purdue. If you look at a couple of those 8-9 seeded teams, Northwestern is, again, this is all going to be... Um, this is all going to change over the next next few weeks, but Northwestern is currently listed as an eight seed in this. They have taken Purdue to overtime twice this season. They've beaten them once, so that's a matchup I'm sure that Purdue wants no part of, but there's other teams as well. Texas is interesting. I know that they've been disappointing this year, but they're, they still have had some big wins. Colorado State is a nine seed in the bracket right now. Currently, Purdue is in the Midwest, and uh, Colorado State is in that same bracket as well. And I think that they could be a very interesting team that could potentially knock off Purdue. So, again, I'm not going to spend this whole time talking about just Purdue, but it's a matter of sort of... When are we going to see a big time statement win from Purdue? Because they're going to be a one seed. 16 seed should be fine. It's really then from there, how much further can we see them get? Because they've lost to double digit seeded teams in three consecutive years and have reached the Sweet 16 just once. And in all of the, these years, they've been some of the top seeds. So they are definitely in the eyes of the public. I'm not saying they are frauds, but they are a little bit on fraud watch in terms of the country believing in them. The final one seed becomes a little bit interesting because there isn't really a true runaway team. If you look at the current rankings, Tennessee is the number four ranked team. I don't think that that's going to be the case. I think that both Marquette and Arizona and maybe you can throw Kansas in there could end up being one seeds as well that that's where really you have those top three as a tier of their own and then it gets a little bit messier um in that next set of teams I mean I like Marquette I think that Tyler Kolek is a very experienced now player that has had a couple years under his belt could be somebody that just sort of fits the archetype a little bit of could be a March Madness story player. Um, I think that Oso Iguodaro is also a very good player as well. It's a very good passing team, and I think that they could definitely be a dangerous group as well. I know that people have soured on them a little bit after their blowout loss to UConn a couple weekends ago, but there is still something there, I believe. North Carolina has fallen off since their win against Duke, but this was and still likely is one of the best defensive teams in the country. I think that they could absolutely be primed for a run here you just sort of have faith I know it's not Roy Williams there anymore but Hubert Davis seems like a very good coach as well they have one of the best guards in the country in RJ Davis I really like Harrison Ingram as well as a forward and Arma Armando Baycott is one of the best bigs in the country as well Duke I would consider to be in that second tier as well now they aren't getting quite as much freshman production I feel like as we've seen in recent years now Jared McCain has really come out and been an x-factor for them the way that he's been able to shoot and the spark plug that he gives has really offset the disappointing season from Tyrese Proctor but he's somebody they can absolutely run action for when he gets hot he is definitely a heat check player Kyle Filipowski holding it down in the middle. And I think that they are decently deep in comparison to typical Duke teams we see where it's just a lot of the five-star freshmen that are coming in and sort of running the show for them. I think that they have a little bit more experience um, along the, the outsides there for them. They have uh, Jeremy Roach, who is now... 
not even sure what year he is now. He's got to be at least a junior at this point. But I think that he's a very good operator of the offense. So he's a senior, yeah. Um, Jeremy Roach is a good player in my opinion. I think that, again, it's just a little bit more of a well-rounded Duke team than we have seen in years past. And then getting into a little bit more of sleeper teams, I suppose. Um, I think that a lot of people are high on St. Mary's this year. They are a group out of, uh, what conference are they? They're the one with Gonzaga. Bad job on my part. I apologize. But they, they're, they're, something, they're a team that has really been coming along as of late. And some people are thinking that they could potentially make a run. But on the note of Gonzaga, they just had a very big win last night against San Francisco on the road as they started out the year pretty shaky, but as the season has gone on, they've been building themselves up more and more, and as a result, they are just about in a situation here where, where they are borderline win and in. Um, Mark Few has done a really good job bringing them along, and now they have an opportunity to play at St. Mary's this Saturday. And if they are able to pull that one off, a team that is a little bit on the brink could absolutely go to the dance. I mentioned Washington State. I think that they are a very fun story. And specifically, one of the players that I am really intrigued in is uh, Jalen Wells. Jalen Wells, coming from Division II basketball last year, was an incredible player. He's another one that has really stepped up as of late and someone on offense that when he is feeling himself, he can be absolutely incredible. He helped power them to the win against Arizona the other week. Um, they're going to be a little bit probably closer to the you know five seed range. They're currently sitting at as the 19th ranked team. But a team that I could definitely see giving one of these top programs more more trouble than they were expecting. And then the last team that I have on this list here is New Mexico. Now, New Mexico just dropped a really tough game against Air Force that they are likely hoping to forget. But all in all, this is a very solid program. They've sort of been hanging on to the the underdog role I feel like over the course of the past few seasons and they have a couple big scorers they have Jalen House and Jamal Mashburn um, they have been good players for them and they're gonna be likely outside of the top 25 by the time that they uh the playoffs come around the tournament comes around but could definitely be in that eight seeded range that could give a one seed a run for their money in the round of 32 but that is all we have time for today thank you very much for tuning in we will be back on monday have a great weekend we will see you at two o'clock then <laughs>